Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm on, I know you're on replay, so we're just going to wait for some people to join us live this morning. But thank you for all you guys that are watching on replay. If you would, uh, comment, let us know where you're watching from. We love to see all different places that we're reaching. And uh, i got a special special guest with me this morning. And I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But I'm going to wait for some people to get signed on. I know we're starting a little earlier than normal. I'd, actually, we hadn't been doing these morning devotions for about a week, so I know there's put some people that uh, probably wondering where we've been and what's going on. But uh, we're back uh, this morning, and I uh, have a real special guest with me this morning, so I'm going to wait. I see some people signing on. Good morning, good morning. If you would, again, please comment where you're watching from. And um, we have a very special guest this morning, someone that I admire and, and uh, has been a great help to me. And the Bible speaks of having uh, there's wisdom with counselors and this man is somebody that's a counselor for me. Anytime I have a, a theological issue or spiritual issue, I, I call him. He's, he's the one I go to. And uh, he's going to be speaking in just a minute. It's good to see all you guys join me. Hey, if you would, please share this video. Because this video is about the end times. It's about what's happening today. The book of Revelation is not a, a book of something that, that uh, is not relevant to our time. A lot of preachers don't preach it. The truth is, it's very relevant to our time. It is our time and, and what's about to transpire in the future. And so it needs to be taught and needs to be taught by men that have understanding and spiritual wisdom to teach it. And that's what we have this morning. So please share this video. Somebody on your news feed will get a blessing from this video. And at this time, we're, I'm not going to waste any more time uh, before I introduce him. Dr. Bobby Carden, uh, he's the pastor of White Oak Free Will Baptist Church in Bladenboro. When I was... Uh, called to preach I didn't have any any support I didn't have anyone that would support me to be a preacher and uh, I was in a local diner in our hometown walked in one morning and I run into him and I've known him all my life matter of fact he called me down in a revival when I was a little <laughs> when I was a teenager I was on the back road talking to a girl and he, he called me down and uh, he said you know you need to you need to be quiet and listen so we I've known him all my life <clears throat> But I run into him at that restaurant, and he said, uh, where are you going to church? And I said, nowhere at the time. He said, well, you need to come come see me. He said, I got something for you to do. And he put me in his pulpit because he heard that I had a call to preach, and he helped me. He put his he, he put his arm around me, he welcomed me in, and he helped me. And I have to say, that for anything that I've done in the ministry preaching-wise, God called me, but God used him to help me to put me in a place to where I could grow and learn and I thank him for that and it's a real blessing for me to be down here in the woods where we preach and to have him want to come down here and preach because this is a lot different than what he's used to it's a lot different than what a lot of preachers are used to because there's no there's no church here there's no crowd it's just it's just the camera and and the word of God but it means so much to me that he's come and he's burdened he's got a message on his heart he wants to share and so at this time, I want to ask him to come, and I want you to um, please share this video, comment, welcome him, if you would, Dr. Bobby Carden, you all welcome him with your comments and share this video, and he's going to come and share the book, uh, some of the book of Revelation with us. Brother Bobby, would you come? Thank you, Brother David. I appreciate that. I, I, I want to say something about my Revelation book, the Revelation Unveiled. <clears throat> There's 35 studies in that book, and I'll tell you how you can get it if you'd like to have it after I get through this morning. Uh, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 24 first and uh, verse 3. And uh, I'm going to give you the introduction to my message. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came out to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I take heed that no man deceive you. And he went on tell us uh, uh, about what was going to happen. And uh, I, I want to share with you this morning what the Lord has laid on my heart. So I'm going to give you a summary of Revelation. Now, Revelation comes from the word apocalypse, which means to unveil. That's why I titled my book, The Revelation Unveiled. It's a full explanation to the threefold question that the disciples asked Jesus privately here. But they said, tell us when shall these things be, what shall be our signs at the end of the world? Now, here in Matthew 24, he gave the sign. And I think the ones that's most appropriate now are the, the ones that we're facing 
is in verse 12 and 13 where it said, Because iniquity shall abound, the love of men shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. We've come to that place today. Now, I want to, I want to just share with you too, uh, uh, Matthew 24 gives the signs there in 12, verse 12 and 13, and also there in verse 21, where it says, There shall be great tribulations such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, no, ever shall be. And uh, as I think of this, uh, what we're looking for now is for Christ to come. He's going to step out on the clouds and shout and shout. The trumpet's going to sound. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then we which shall have saved and alive remain shall be caught together in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And nobody knows when that's going to happen. In Matthew chapter, in, in Mark chapter 13, in verse 32, I want to read that verse to you. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. In, in, in your Bible, it said here, Mark chapter 13 and verse 32. It says, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Even Jesus doesn't know, but one day the Father's going to speak to him and tell him to go get in church. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. And I want to share with you here, and I'll turn to book, turn to Revelation chapter one. In Revelation chapter one, it said the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angels unto his servant John, who bare record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, and all the things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Now, I want to use that as an introduction here in Revelation chapter 1. It talks about the revelation of Jesus Christ. This was given to him after his ascension. Now, in a lot of Bibles at the top of your page there, it'll say the revelation of St. John Divine, but it's not the revelation of St. John Divine. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, as it says here in verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant John. So this is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ that God gave to him after his ascension when he went back to heaven. The revelation of Jesus Christ given after his ascension. And verse 3, too, is a special blessing promise. It says here, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written there, and for the time is at hand. So the special blessing promise to those who read and study and hear the book of Revelation. Now here we see too a, a special blessing promise here and a prophecy we see John's vision of Jesus. Now if I say we see John's vision of Jesus, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet, saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book, and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, and to Ephesus, and to the Spira, and Pergamos, and the Thyatira, and the Sardis, and Philadelphia, and the Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. In the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like as a son of man, clothed the garment down to the foot, and girded about the put hat for the golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, his eyes was the flame of fire, and his feet like a divine brass as they burned in a furnace, and his voice was the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth were a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shines in his strength. And John, I, John, when I saw him, I fell at his feet of dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, I am the first and the last, I am he that liveth and was dead, so hold I'm alive evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So here we see John getting this vision here on the Isle of Patmos. He's been exiled, trying to get him away from uh, the people. And here God uh, appears to him through the angel here and then shows him the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we all need to do. We need to see Jesus Christ. But here we see a special blessing promise. We see a prophecy, John's vision of Jesus. And then Revelation 2 and 3, church, we see the church period, uh, the church age. Now, the history of the church, I think of the 7,000 years and the seven dispensations starting with Innocence Dark in the Garden. And all through the book of Revelation, you see seven, seven, seven. 
And uh, that's God's number, that's Jesus' number. And here we see seven periods of church history. And here uh, it starts back start in chapter 2 and chapter 3. It says the message to the seven churches here has a fourfold application. It's local to those churches that actually addressed in that day. It's admonitory to all our churches and all our times, and by which we may discern the true spiritual state in the sight of God. And then it's prophetic, it's personal, and it's prophetic, it's prophesied, as it flows in seven phases of the spiritual history of the church. Now, when I look at that too, I see the history of the church here, and then I, uh, Ephesus will start with that, the first church, the apostolic church in the days of Peter, James, and John. It started on fire there in the, uh, and, 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 and this message to Ephesus, though, is the church at the end of the apostolic age. The first love had, that they had left, he said in verse, in verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen, repent, do the first work, so else I'll come to thee quickly, I'll remove the candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. So here we see that the fire had gone out, they, they, they turned away, it, it says, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And leave the first love, and leave it to the church, and be it. And God's work, amen. Many churches are like that today but were on fire, but now they've left, they've lost their first love. And when they lose their first love, then they're not affected. Nobody gets saved, nobody's blessed. So we see here the, the history of Ephesus, the apostolic church that left its first love. Now, the next church is Samirna. And Samir, Samirna was a, a, a persecuted church. It said the message to Samirna appeared, Samir, Samir, appeared of the great persecution. To the angel of the church in Samirna writes, these things saith the first and the last which is dead and alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou, I, I know the blaspheme of the difference. Say they are Jews and the synagogue of Satan. Sure none of those things that shall happen. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in prison. You may be tried. You may have tribulation in ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to his churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now each of these messages... The Lord, uh, he says this in the last thing. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says in the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. Now, Samirna was a, pers a persecuted church. They had always followed backslide, and that's what had happened. They left their first love. And the persecution came, and if you'll go to the library and get your book, Fox's Book of Martyrs, you'll see how that all down through the church ages, that's the way it's been. Now, the church of Smyrna was a persecuted church that always falls backslide, and that's what they've done when they left the first love. There are many folks in the church today that are still going on with their church work, but they've backslid, and they've, they've lost the first love, and they're not winning souls. Now, the, Smyrna, the, church, the church of Smyrna here was a persecuted church, and then and the next church, that's Pergamos, and that word Pergamos means marriage to the world. That's what happens when people get backslid. They, 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 they get married sort of to the world and, and uh, I thought they, they, they sinned and uh, for the Pergamus, Pergamus church was that way it was a church that had after they backslid then they got married to the world the Bible said love not the world things in the world lust of the flesh lust of the eye the pride of life any man love the world love of the father is not in and the world passes away and the lust of all, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever and then the next church age is Thyatira. That was the last church, false teaching, the papacy, Romanism had taken over. And then the next church started, the dead church. They had a name they lived, but they were dead spiritually. But the Reformation came out of this. The Reformation came out of this and started a Reformation that went around the world. Now, uh, Philadelphia, the next church, is a church of brothers of love. That was a time of re revival, really prophetically pictures the true believers of the last days, too. And when I say uh, Philadelphia was the church of brothers love in times of revival, I think that was the days of Kenyon, Spurgeon, and Moody, and those great men, and uh, the real revival went on during that successful time. And then the last church is Laodicea. That's a lukewarm church. That's our age. That's where we're at now. That's where uh, we're at. We're, we're, they're neither hot nor cold, and they, they, they've gone away from the Lord. And uh, when, I, when I look at that, too, what the Lord has to say about that church, under the angel of the church of Laodicea, write these things, saith the Amen, the faithful, true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. 
I was there on cold or hot, so let me talk out lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. I will spew thee out of my mouth. So here's the, the church, the last church age, and we're living in it now. We're living in the Laodicean age, and it's the same way today. And then when I look at that too, the next thing on God's calendar yeah, is there, and uh, well, I look at verse 20 there first. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him, we'll sup with him, and him he with me. To him that overcometh like that, to sit with me in my throne, even as I also came and sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. That's the way he closes each church age. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And have a place and attitude of Christ right now at the, at the end of the church ages here. He's knocking on the heart's door of people, wanting people to open the door and let him come in. But the next thing that's going to happen there in chapter 4, that, that says here, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was that of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up to the, and I will show thee things which thou must be hereafter. Now what happened? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Lord knocking on the door for people to let him come in. And then after, after that, we see the rapture. That's what's happened here. I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice I heard was of a, of a, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, I'll show thee things which must be your asking. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, one sat on the throne. He that sat was to look upon like a jasper on a sardine stone. There was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like an emerald. Now, down here we just see part of a, of a rainbow, but up there it'll be a complete rainbow. And uh, it says here there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like an emerald. And when I look at this here in, in verse, uh, uh, verse uh, five, uh, 4, we see the rapture, we see the rainbow, the throne in heaven, and then chapter 5 we see the seven sealed book, uh, sealed book. I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who's worthy to open the book to loose the, seal, loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither on earth, was able to open the book, neither look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open to read the book, neither look thereon. And, and one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion, the tribe of Judah, that's Jesus, the root of David has prevailed to open the book, to loose the seven seals. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, the four beasts, in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as it having been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Now God's sitting upon the throne. Jesus steps up and takes this book. This is the book of redemption. And as he opens it, history transpires. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within, and on the back side sealed with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming the voice, who's worthy of the book. And Jesus steps up, and he takes this book. When he'd taken the book, the four beasts fell, and four twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Now, when he's talking about here the four beasts and the four and twenty elders, the four and twenty elders represent us that are, that, that are saved, those that are in heaven. Uh, in the Old Testament economy, there were four and twenty elders on, on duty all the time. It represented all the people, and this represents all of God's people that's there. It said here, they sung a new song, thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou was slain, hath then redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Boy, that's going to be a wonderful time during the millennium. Now, when I look at that too here, we see the seven seal book, the book of Revel uh, the book of redemption. That's what it is. And then Revelation six, we see the four horsemen of the apocalypse. When I say the first four, ho uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse, when I saw the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard the noise of the thunder of one of the four beasts saying, "Come and see." And I saw a white horse, and he sat on him, had a bow, and a crown was given to him, went forth conquering to conquer. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. There went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat down to take peace from the earth. They should kill one another. I was given him a great toy. When he would opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld the little black horse, and he that sat on him, I fire a balance of his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, 
I measured wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see that I hurt not the oil and the wine. When he'd opened the fourth seal, I heard the, fourth, the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, that pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given to him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with swords of hunger with death and with the beasts of the earth. And when you look at that there, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, it's a full view of the entire revelation period. When I say it's a full view of the entire revelation, if you go over there to verse 12, it said, Behold, I held... I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, the moon became as blood, the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even to the fig tree character in time to fix and shake of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, and it rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, the mighty men, the bondmen, every man that hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath to come, and who shall be able to stand? Here we see it's a full view of the end tri tribulation down to the end. We see when this white horse is revealed that he promises peace and brings war. Then we see the red horse that, uh, that brings uh, death. And then we see that the third seal, the black horse, and it, that's talking about famine then. That's what's going to happen. He's going to come promising peace. He's going to plunge it into war. And then there's going to be uh, hunger. It's always in a war. And then the last one, the pale horse, is, uh, it, says, it says death and hell follow with him. This is what's going to happen there. It's a the study there in verse 6. It's a full view of the entire tribulation down to the end. Verses 7 through 11 shows us the tribulation judgment. When I say the tribulation judgment in, in, in chapter 7, uh, through, uh, through, uh, through 11. I want to read that. Chapter 7 uh, through 11. And uh, here it, it talks about in, in uh, 7 through 11, the tribulation judgment. In other words, we, uh, we're going to, uh, the world, we won't, because we'll be with the Lord. We'll go into rapture. But uh, if you get a review of the entire rep, rep, tribulation period here, and you see that tribulation events that will be invaded from another world, from the abyss. Uh, that's where the fallen angels are, in the abyss. That's what's going to happen. They're going to invade the earth. In chapter 9 there, verses 7 to 11, I want to read that. Verse, chapter 9, verse 7 to 11. And those days shall men seek death, shall not find it, shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shape of the locusts was like unto horses prepared to battle, and on their heads were crowns like gold. Their faces were the faces of men, they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were the teeth of the lions. They had breastplates, as it were, bridge breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots, and many horses running into battle. They had tails like <coughs> the scorpions. There were stings in their tails, and their fowl was hurt men five months. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottom of the pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. One woe is passed, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So here we see in chapter 7 through 11 the tribulation judgments. And we see it's going to be invaded from the Lord. The abyss is going to be open, and these creatures are going to come out. And when I say these creatures are going to come out, it said here, their faces are the faces of men. They had hair as the hair of women. Their teeth were the teeth of like the teeth of lions. They had breastplates for breastplates of iron. The sound of the wings was the sound of church. And many horses running the battle. They had tails like under scorpions. They were strings in their tails, and their fowls hurt men five months. They had a king of them, which was the angel of the bottom of the pit. The name of the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but the Greek tongue has its name of Polly, and access to the beast, the Antichrist. One passes, one will is passed, and behold, there comes two or more after. So we see here in chapter 7 through 11, the tribulation judgments. Now, I'm not going to go all on them for the sake of time, but if you'll drop down to Revelation chapter 11 and verse 3, I will, it shows the ministry of God's two witnesses. God's going to have two witnesses in chapter 11 chapter 11 and verse 3 it said I will give power well two, the two witnesses are going to prophesy for 42 months or three and a half years this will be the last three and a half years I'll give power to my two witnesses they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three four days clothed in sackcloth these are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of earth and if any man will hurt them fire proceedeth out of their mouth devour the enemies if any man will hurt them he must not be killed these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of the prophecy. 
how powerful it was to turn them the blood to smite the earth with all plagues as often the will. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottom of the pit shall make war against them, shall overcome them and kill them. But then they're going to come back to life. Their dead bodies shall lie in the street of a great city, which the church shall call Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they are the people in kindred and tongues and nations shall see their, their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer that dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them, make myrrh, and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. They had the power to do all these things. After these three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered in them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them, which saw them, and they heard a great voice of heaven saying to them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to the heavens in a cloud, and they entered and beheld them. Now these two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. They've always been his two witnesses. And I'm going to give you some scriptures for that in Luke chapter 9, verse 30 and 31. Luke chapter 9, verses 30 and 31. I'm going to read that to you. It said here, It came to pass about eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James, went up into a mountain to pray. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His rainbow was white as good as them. Behold, I talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah. They are both, they are pure. You know what they talked about? They talked about Calvary. Behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in his glory, and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Moses and Elijah have always been his two, his two witnesses. Not only here, when he, when he transfigured there, uh, uh, but now also, when I, when I look at it here, uh, that Moses and Elijah, that, uh, here in Luke chapter 9, verse 30 and 31, I just read, and they were two witnesses there. And in Luke 24 and verse 4, I want to read that. Luke 24 and verse 24, verse 4, it came to that. It, he's talking about the resurrection. He's talking about Calvary there, and he's talking about the res resurrection of Christ. It said, uh, the body of the Lord Jesus, they entered and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. The answer passed as they were much perplexed there about Behold, two men, notice the word men, stood to them in shining garments, and they were afraid. They bowed down their faces to the earth. And, and they said unto them, Why seek you to leave him among the dead? He's not here, but he's risen. But the, Moses and Elijah appeared there talking to him on the line of transfiguration, invited to, that I was going to accomplish his deceit there at the Calvary. And then it's got to hear it in, 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 the, in the resurrection. And also when he ascended back to heaven, there was two men. It said here, why they looked steadfast at toward heaven as it went up, behold, two men stood to them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gaze up in heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up to you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Now these two men have always been his witnesses. I just wanted to bring that out. Now in chapter 12, this is probably the most important chapter in the book of Revelation. It's about Israel and Christ and Satan. Revelation chapter 12. I want to read that to you. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed up with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head, and his tail through the third part of the stars of heaven, to cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to die her child as soon as he was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God, she was strong, and a woman fled in the wilderness, for she had a place to the part of God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. And when it says here, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon, and under her feet and up, up under her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, this, the, the, the read back in the book of Genesis. It said here, now here's where Joseph dreamed the dream. He dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brother and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. What he's saying is here, his mother and his father and his brothers and all of them are going to do obeisance to him. And that happens when he comes down to uh, uh, they, when the things got bad in Egypt and they came looking for food. But anyway, this is talking about, this is talking about Jesus. It's talking about uh, Israel. It's talking about Christ. It said here, she being with child, cried, prevailing in birth, pain to be delivered. There appeared another wonder in heaven, over red, red dragon, that's the devil. Having seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns, upon his, head, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman, which was to be delivered, for to bear his child as soon as he was born, and dear the child of Christ. And she brought forth a man child who was through all nations, for the rod of behind her child was caught in the God and his throne. So this is one of the most important chapters. 
I can't wail about Israel, Christ, and Satan. And when I say that too, here's what's going to happen. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was the place found anymore in heaven. The great dragon was cast out. The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and new strength and kingdom of our God and power of the Christ. The accuser of our brethren to cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. And that's what the devil is doing now. He's accusing God's people. messing with God's people's minds, really. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they lived, loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, ye dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time. He's been cast down, and now he's got a short time. And that's why all the brakes are off right now. And he's doing everything he can to take over and to damn people's souls. So they, and then he goes on to talk about uh, Satan and Israel in the tribulation and the Jewish remnant and so forth in that chapter. But at chapter 13, <clears throat> chapter 13, he's talking about the unholy trinity. Just like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There's the devil, the Antichrist, the, the devil is lost prophet and the Antichrist. He copies the things of, dev, of God, that's why he's so successful. But here in chapter 13, we see the beast out of the sea. I stood in front of the sand and sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, upon his head, name of blasphemy. And the beast which he saw was like a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, the devil gave him his power. And his seat and great authority. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. His dead to wound with wound, healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? They were given to him a mouth speaking great things. Blasphemous and power was given to him to continue 40 and two months. Uh, 40 and two months. Uh, 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 three and, three and a, a half years. He opened his mouth and blasphemed against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, his them dwelling, and was given to him to make war with the saints, to overcome them. Power was given him of all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And then he goes on to talk about the beast out of the earth, as the beast out of the sea. Now the beast out of the earth, like the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, or the devil, the, 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 the false prophet, the antichrist. I beheld another beast coming up the earth, <clears throat> had two horns like a lamb, the face of the dragon. He exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He did thus do it great wonders. He maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, deceive them that dwell on the earth for the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live, <clears throat> and he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he calls us all, uh, he calls us all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, say he that had the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. And then it goes on talking about that. But then in chapter 14, we see something else. In chapter 14, we get a preview of things that are ahead. It's like in chapter 14, like if I had a tape player here and I'd push the thing to pause and then I'd, uh, and then I'd uh, go, uh, start again. So that's what Revelation 14 chapter is, a preview of things that have the table of contents for the rest of the book. But chapter 15 and 16 <clears throat> go together. And I say chapter 15 and 16 go together. The subdivision of the angels and the seven last plagues, the bowls of the wrath of God. I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God, they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty, just and true of thy ways. Thy King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, for thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. And after that I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle, the testimony of heaven was opened, and seven angels came out of the temple, having seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, having their breasts girded with gold and 
And one of the four beasts gave unto the, the seven angels <clears throat> seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. No man was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now we're going to see these seven plagues here, the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. The first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. I felt an awesome and grievous sore upon the men, which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worked the image. The second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vials upon the rivers and fountains of water. They became blood. And I heard the angel of the Lord say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which are and was and shall be, because thou hast judged them, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink for their word, that they wouldn't accept the blood, and God gives them blood to drink. I heard another out of all saying, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgment. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and fire was given to him scorched men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast. His kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blaspheme the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores repented not of the deep. Now here's what's going to happen. A friend of mine that I used to preach for in, in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Brother Johnny Bullman, he had a sermon here. He preached on gnawing tongues and drinking blood. And these people would be gnawing tongues and drinking blood. Here. He preached that in revivals and people would get saved. Now he goes, he goes on uh, talking about what's going to happen to the seven angels before he died. He's right. Uh, but in chapter, chapter 15 and 16, now chapter 17, is God's judgment on the ecclesiastical Babylon. Now when I say this, it says, <clears throat> There came one of the seven angels which had seven vials and talked with his say, Come hither, I will show thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many wars, <clears throat> with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the have made drunk with a blind of her fornication. But he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness. I saw a woman set upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was the name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. Every one of those words has a capital letter. Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs, And the angel said to me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, the beast that carries her, which hath the seven horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottom of the pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life for the foundation of the world, that behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is. Now, this is talking about the person that, that comes out of the abyss, really. And it said, Here, here is the mind which is, hath wisdom. The seven heads of seven mountains on which woman sitteth, there are seven kings, five of all, one is, and the other not yet come. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. The beast that was and is, not, it, 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 he is the eighth, and he is the set, it, it, of the seventh that goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which are stars for ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power of kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength to the beast. That shall make war with the lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lord and King of Kings, and they that are with him are called faithful, chosen faithful in truth. And he that saith in them, the waters which thou saw are for the horse city, are multitudes and nations and tongues. It's talking about Ecclesiastes for Babylon. It's talking about Catholicism, Romanism. It said here, he said, the waters which thou saw are for the horse city, are people and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou saw upon the beast, they shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will. See, God's just feeling charge. God has put in his heart to fulfill it. In other words, I'm going to be glad when all this uh, 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 false religion is destroyed. This is when it happens. God has put in their hearts to fulfill the will, to agree, uh, his will, to agree in that kingdom, and the, uh, to give that kingdom to be, so the words of God should be fulfilled. And the one which thou saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. It's talking about, uh, it's, it's talking about over that where the headquarters are, really. And then the, 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 that's the Ecclesiastical Babylon. That all false religion is, religion is going to be destroyed. 
And then chapter 18, it's talking, chapter 18 here, it's talking about God's judgment of political converse, commercial Babylon. There's going to be a one world church, a one world government, and a one world ruler. And this is what talking about this political uh, thing. It's talking about here God's judgment of political commercial Babylon. And uh, it shows how it's destroyed there in verse 10. <clears throat> and what's going to happen? Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, that mighty city is fought for in one hour, is thy judgment come. And then it says, uh, Rejoice not in heaven about that. Rejoice over her, thy heaven, ye ho holy apostles and prophets. For God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone and lost a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now God's going to destroy it just like he did Sodom and Gomorrah. But here in verse chapter 19, we see something, and I like this. I really like this. Verses 1 through 10, I'm going to read them first. After these things, I heard a great voice say, I must speak much people in heaven saying hallelujah. There are four hallelujahs here. I got a sermon I preached on the four hallelujahs. After these things, I heard a great voice. I much people in heaven saying hallelujah, salvation, glory, honor, power of the Lord our God. the blood of his saints at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah! And her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, and the four beasts, the four and twenty elders represent all that are saved. And the four and twenty elders, the four beasts fell down and worship God that sat on the throne saying, Amen! Hallelujah! And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, and ye that carry him most tall the grace. And I heard there was the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, the voice of my son, saying, Hallelujah! For the Lord God of Nephthys reigneth. I tell you, I've heard the Hallelujah song sung by great choirs, and it made it does something to me. But when all of God's people go to singing Hallelujah and praising the Lord, it's going to be something. And then we're going to have a marriage, the marriage of the Lamb. Let us be glad and rejoice. You've honored him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. His wife had made herself ready. To her granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteous of the saints. And he says unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Now we see what Christ coming back to fight the battle of Armageddon. I saw heaven open, behold a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true and righteousness. He that judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire. On his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but himself. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he might the nations that shall rule them with a rod of iron. He traced the wine press of the fierce and the press of the Lord of God, and he had on his vest and on his side a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And now here's the battle of Armageddon. I saw an angel standing in the sun, crying with a loud voice, saying, All the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God. They made the flesh of king and flesh of captains and flesh of mighty men and flesh of horses with them that sit on them and flesh of all men, both free and bond, and both small and great. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that fell on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, that's the Antichrist, and on him the false prophet, that's one that directs uh, worship to the Antichrist, that wrought milk before him, that which had seen and that received the mark of the beast, and them that worshiped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Now the devil's going to join them in just a few minutes now. And the remnant was slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse with sword through pursuit of eyes of mouth, and the fowls were filled with the flesh. And then Satan is going to be bound. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottom of the pit, and a great hand chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan had bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottom of the pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him to deceive the nation no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. We're going to have a thousand years of a honeymoon here on this earth. That the glory of the Lord will cover this earth as the waters cover the sea, those that are saved. And then it said, Now I saw thrones and judge, and they sat, sat upon them, and judgment was given them. I saw the souls of them that were headed for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. This is talking about the millennium. All of us that are saved, we're going to be there with Christ. It's going to be our honeymoon before we go to our new home. But again, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath put part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. 
the cows shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And I was going to tell us why. We're going to see why Satan should be turned loose after he'd been incarcerated there for a thousand years. He shall go out to deceive the nations which are in four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to battle, the number of whom is the sand of the sea. And they went upon the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God of heaven and devoured them. Now, there will be people entering into the millennium on a natural body who got saved, and they will reproduce for a thousand years, and this, they, they, even though people have lived in a perfect thing with Christ, they still didn't accept him, and when the devil is turned loose, they're going to follow him. And here's what's going to happen to them. They went upon the breast of the earth and compassed the Catholic saints about the other city, and first fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And now, here's the doom of the devil. We saw the beast in the Antichrist cast in the lake of fire. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire with the beast and the false prophet are shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne. After, after that taken care of, all the people that have ever lived that did not accept Christ as Savior is going to be getting this great white throne judgment. I saw a great white throne on him that turned his face to earth and the face of heaven fell away because found no place for them. I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the book were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book before their works. And the sea gave the dead which were in death, and hell lifted the dead which were in them. They were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Every time a person accepts Christ as personal Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into the body. Their name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And I'm glad my name's in that book. Amen. And then here's what's going to happen. We're going to have a new heaven now. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth will pass away. There was no more sea, and I, John, saw the holy city in New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, put prayers about it on for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, be their God. And here's one of the most tremendous verses in the Bible. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain. For the former things have passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said, I got a sermon I preach on no more. No more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. I've heard a lot of sermons about heaven, heard a lot of songs about heaven, but the sweetest thing about heaven is those two words, no more. God shall wipe away tears from the eyes, there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. He that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And then he said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I'll be his God, and he shall be my son. Now here's what's going to happen to those that didn't accept Christ. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, which is the second death. And when I look at that, you know, I believe there'd be more people just unbelievers in hell than it would be anything else. The fearful and unbelieving and the abominable, the murders, and homongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all lies shall have their part in the lake, lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And now, as I look at that, you see eternity unveiled. A new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem. The Lord will make all things new. And then said, the new paradise that shall reign forever and ever there in verse it says, chapter 22. Is your name in the book? Is your name in the book? Well, if you study the book, you're, you're lost. You need to get your name in the book by accepting Christ as your person and Savior. Father, we thank you today that we can try to share with these people that are looking and listening. I pray in a special way if there's anybody listening that's not saved, that they'll ask Christ to save today. The word of faith is nigh them, even in thy mouth and heart. The word of faith which we preach says, They are shot out to the of thy mouth, for what Jesus shall believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I pray that many right now might call upon the Lord and be saved today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Now I want to ask you if you'd like to have this book on Revelation. Revelation Unveiled. I've... I've uh, Used that for years now, and, and thousands of them printed. And one church, the Beaver Down Church over in Chadron, had 350 books at one time. They had a great study and had a great uh, time in their church with that. If you'd like to have one, they're $20. Because, and the reason I up my price, 
is because of the way the mailing is now, what the post office charges, amen. And if you'd like to have them, my address is Post Office Box 734, Bladenburg, North Carolina, 28320, The Voice of Revival. And uh, I, I pray this is but a blessing to you today. God bless you, Brother David. Thank you, Preacher Bobby. Please be sure if you or your church would like to have a book on Revelation, the Revelation available, be sure to uh, send that $20 to his uh, address that he's put on here, and, and he'll be he'll get you the book in a timely manner. And we thank him for joining us today, and, and uh, we'll um, be in revival um, this coming Sunday at Deliverance Church in Newton Grove. And it's posted on our page, the address for that church. Um, Nathan Shelton and myself will start Sunday morning. And we'll be there Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I believe. Um, but I'll I'll go back and look at that repost. But you can go to our page and see the where we're going to be there for this starting this Sunday. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, pray that you are blessed. Let the words of our mouth and meditation of our hearts be accepted in His sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Amen.